Welcome if you're new here and welcome back if you're a current subscriber or seen my videos before. My name is Adriana, I'm a certified personal trainer and here on my YouTube channel I show you some of my favorite meals I like to cook at home slash gym workouts and what we're doing today I talk about PCOS. And today we're going to be talking about common nutrient and vitamin deficiencies in PCOS. This is something that happens to women who have PCOS. It is common. You may or may not be aware of it, but we are going to be talking about it today. So we're going to go over the common vitamin and mineral deficiencies, how to get tested for them, and supplements and foods that help. So let's get started. So PCOS is associated with a range of nutrient and vitamin deficiencies. Even if you are eating a nourishing, ba balanced diet, it is still possible to become deficient in certain nutrients due to the disease, due to the process of how PCOS is. Uh, your body may lack important vitamins, minerals, and micronutrients. So we do know that PCOS is a hormonal and metabolic disorder. Um, most of the time we are more focused on the macros of our diet, so like our carbs, our proteins, and our fats. And we do tend to neglect the micronutrients, vitamins, and minerals that we need in our diets. A lot of the nutrients that we may have a defi def deficiency in or have an ins insufficient amount of tend to affect our mood, our blood sugar levels, our cortisol levels, our weight management, and a lot more. So in a study that was conducted in Poland in 2016, it seems like a while ago, they took 45, 54 women, excuse me, 54 women in childbearing age and did a quantitative assessment of the women's diets and performed and was performed based on the analysis of a three-day food diaries and food records taken from the previous 24 hours with the inter interview method. The data the data were introduced to a dietary software, DIETA 5.0, calculating the average intake of the energy, nutrients, vitamins, minerals, cholesterol, and dietary fiber. The obtained results were compared to the Polish dietary guidelines. By the way, I will be linking this below if you do want to check that out, along with the other studies I'll be covering. Well, the conclusion of it was that the highest risk of deficiencies in minerals in women with PCOS was related to calcium, potassium, magnesium, whereas the reference to vitamin deficiency were at risk to, of inefficient intake of folic acid, vitamin C, and vitamin B12. Diet of the woman with PCOS, there should be higher intake of folic acid, aka it could be interchangeable with folate, vitamin D and C, uh, dietary fiber, and calcium. But we are definitely going to go over more than just that today. So let's get into the common mineral and vitamin deficiencies. So we'll be covering today magnesium, calcium, vitamin D, zinc, potassium, folate slash folic acid, vitamin B12, vitamin C, and chromium. Yes, I'm pronouncing that correctly. Well, so first up, we're going to talk about magnesium. Magnesium is a mineral that plays a role in the muscle and nerve function metabolism, blood sugar levels, and blood pressure. It may also help with anxiety, promote better sleep, and reduces inflammation. When it comes to PCOS, it improves insulin resistance. Magnesium plays a role in glucose and insulin resistance. It helps the glucose enter the cells so they can be used for energy. It helps lower blood pressure as well. In PCOS, it is common to have high blood pressure. So foods are high in magnesium. We have pumpkin seeds, almonds, spinach, ligamines, broccoli, and whole grains. For supplementation, there are a few magnesium supplementations you may take, but a more common one would be magnesium glycinate, which is gonna be a lot easier to digest. And, and just a friendly reminder, do consult your doctor before taking on any new supplementations. So magnesium glycinate is a little easier to digest, especially if you do have tummy troubles, but of course, it's up to your doctor to which magnesium you should be taking. Next up, we got calcium and vitamin D. I'm doing these together because vitamin D is needed to absorb calcium. So calcium is primarily known to help support healthy bones and teeth. It plays a role in muscle contraction, heart rhythm, and blood clots. 
Vitamin D role, plays a role in reproduction, including ovarian follicular development, maintaining healthy bones, supporting immune system, and regulating insulin levels. When it comes to PCOS, vitamin D and calcium help with menstrual cycle regulation. Deficiencies in vitamin D increase insulin resistance and androgens. So androgens are your male hormones, aka like testosterone. So supplementation of calcium and vitamin D has shown positive effects on weight loss, follicle maturation, menstrual regulation, and hyperandrogenism. Now foods with vitamin D and calcium. So it's going to be spinach, kale, salmon, perch, dairy products like cheese, milk, and yogurt, and also going outside and getting some sun for the vitamin D is super beneficial. And for those who don't know, vitamin D is actually a hormone. So the body synthesizes the vitamin D after sun exposure and it's activated by the liver and kidneys. A little fun fact, because not many people know that vitamin D is a hormone. You can always, of course, take it in pill form. Um, zinc is up next. V zinc I've heard so many times when it came to women with PCOS, so I'm kind of excited to be going over this one. Zinc is a trace metal, so it plays a role in the enzyme functions in the body, cholesterol, glucose metabolism, and fertility. Zinc has been shown to help regulate menstrual cycles and improve symptoms of PMS, so bloating, cramps, and headaches. It helps follicles to mature when it comes to ovulation. Ovulate, ovulation, ovulation, ovulation. Zinc helps with hair loss. This is the primary reason I've heard of zinc a lot, especially when women are experiencing hair loss from PCOS. Zinc is a common supplement to take to help combat that. So zinc helps with hair loss as well as unwanted excess hair growth. Zinc works to inhibit the enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT. This is one of the reasons there is a male pattern baldness. This is side note on that one. And it is also, DHT is also associated with acne. There has been a 12 week study done on this, supplementing zinc with magnesium, calcium, and vitamin D, where women saw improvements in all of this. Zinc also plays a role in lowering down insulin levels since it is involved with the storage and release of insulin. So foods that have zinc. Oysters are gonna be number one. They do have the most zinc in it, but red meat such as beef have it, so steak, roast, they all have it in there. Um, then we have our almonds, our pumpkin seeds, peas, beans, ligmeans, chickpeas. They will all have zinc in it as well. Now moving on, we're going to go into potassium. Its role in the body helps maintain normal levels of fluid in our cells, muscles to contract and support normal blood pressure. So I wasn't able to exactly find out how potassium plays a role in PCOS, but it's still vital to have in order to have a meet, uh, maintain and have a healthy body. Um, I also do know potassium does help with cramping as well. So make sure you get your bananas in, so if you're experiencing any type of muscle cramps. But foods with potassium, beans, lentils, spinach, broccoli, potatoes, and da -da -da, what I just mentioned a second ago, bananas. <laughs> Folate. Folate is another big one, especially when it comes to fertility in general. But folate is also known as vitamin B9. It is usually found in leafy greens. Folate acid is a synthetic version of folate. So folate and folic acid are used interchangeably, but it's important to know the difference between the two. So folate is naturally found in foods while folic acid is a synthetic version of it. Folate can also help with insulin resistance. Why is someone, oh, that's hilarious. I need to turn this off, my bad. I thought I muted it. No, mute. Oh my God, how do I mute this thing? There we go. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyways, back to what I was reading and talking about. But folate can also help with insulin resistance. So folate and folic acid help with glucose metabolization, lipid levels, and chronic inflammation, which are all things that play a role in PCOS and affect women with PCOS. It may help with fertility. Folate and folic acid are important for pregnancy because they can help prevent birth defects. 
known as neural tube defects and spina bifid. Oh, cool. I pronounced that right. Usually you call it spina bifid, but oh yeah, spina bifid. I think I spelled, I can't pronounce all my words right, but it does help with that. That's what you find in a lot of the prenatals and it is recommended by doc most doctors for women to take it. So foods that have folate in it naturally outside supplementation, your dark leafy greens, so you're going to think about like lettuce, kale, um, you're going to have your lentils, you're going to have your eggs and your whole grains. Now moving along to the next vitamin, it's going to be vitamin B12. So B12 is needed to form red blood cells and DNA. It also plays a role in the function and development of the brain and nerve cells. So bear with me, I'm going to quote this from a study. I'm going to have again, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to have all these studies linked below in the description box. If you want to go ahead and take a look at them yourselves, you're more than welcome to. But to start this quote off of this study, fasting insulin, insulin resistance, and homocysteine, a type of amino acid, a chemical in your body uses to make proteins, for those who don't know what homocysteine is are independent determinants of serum vitamin B12 concentrates. In PCOS patients, insulin resistance, obesity, and elevated homoc homocysteine were associated with lower serum vitamin B12 concentrations in PCOS patients. End the quote. So this is from a study done on obesity and insulin resistance being associated with lower levels of B12 in PCOS. This same article mentions that it, it has been previously demonstrated that folate and B12 treatment improves insulin resistance in patients with metabolic syndrome. So foods that have B12 in it, fish and shellfish, so we're gonna think about mackerel, salmon, trout, crab, again, we're gonna have our red meats, beef liver is a great source of vitamin B12, and fortified dairy, fortified cereals, and yeast. Vitamin C, we're probably the most probably the most common known vitamin, especially when it comes towards our cold and flu season. But vitamin C, as most of us know, is an antioxidant and a way to help fight off colds. Vitamin C is involved in a lot of things in the body, such as the formation of collagen, absorption of iron, immune system, healing, maintenance of cartilage, bone, and teeth. And this study has demonstrated that vitamin C plays a, plays a protective role against DHEA, induced polycystic ovaries in windstar rats via its antioxidant and antipoptonitic mechanisms. So a reduction in cystic and erotic ovaries. So this is a study that was done on rats, but it still can be beneficial for women with PCOS. So foods that have vitamin C, fruits and vegetables or such as oranges, lemons, kiwis, grapefruits, so mostly a lot of our citrus fruits are gonna have the vitamin C in it, bell peppers, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and cauliflower. And chromium, not many people are very familiar with chromium. Um, I actually do take a supplementation of chromium, but chromium is an essential trace mineral. It, trivalent chromium, which is safe, so there's gonna be a couple of I think there's two, but I take one of them, which I'll get into later on. Uh, tri trivalent chromium, which is safe for humans, can be found in foods and supplements. It helps with blood sugar levels and insulin resistance. In a study done on chromium supplementation, so it's the, what the supplementation you use is actually the one that I take, is chromium picolinate, if I'm pronouncing that correctly has shown beneficial effects on decreasing BMI, fasting insulin, and free testosterone in PCOS patients. In another randomized control study, it showed that three months of low doses of chromium has a significant effect on insulin resistance. In Egypt, they did a high dosage of it for six months that showed improvement in ovulation and hyperandrogenism. Studies show favor in longer duration, higher dosages but also encourage physical exercise and diet control. So that was a super interesting study to read. Um, it showed most of, it's, it's, again, I'm gonna link this down below. It showed a lot of studies that where they found it beneficial and there's a couple studies that were like, ah, oh, I don't think so. But I personally found benefit from chromium. Um, again, consult your doctor with it. But foods that have chromium in it, so your lean beef or turkey breast, chicken breast, grape juice, green beans, whole wheat, 
lettuce, apples with the peel still on it, and tomatoes. So chromium picolone can be bought as a supplement, but the dose and whether you should take it or not is going to be up to your doctor. So with that being said, those were the most common nutrient deficiencies that came to, PCO, to PCOS. Um, but all these vitamins and minerals can be supplemented. And this video information isn't for you to go ahead and like run straight to Amazon and start buying all these supplements. Um, this is supposed to help you open up a conversation with your doctor and ask for the proper testing to see if you even have any nutrient deficiencies. And if so, which ones and will be the right course of action for you to take in regards to whether there's going to be supplementation, the dosage of supplementation, or uh, or it's going to be eating the correct foods. Plus, if you are on other medications, your doses of supplementation may vary because I do know that certain medications may cause deficiencies or certain supplements will not work with the medication as that well. So again, this is why it's important to talk to your doctor before introducing new supplements. So here are some of the symptoms you may experience if you have a nutrient deficiency. So you're going to have hair loss, unexplained fatigue, dry skin, brittle nails, bone pain, burning sensation in the tongue or feet, feeling weak, easily bruising. And these are just some of the things you may experience. And for you to find out if you do have a nutrient deficiency, there are plenty at home tests that you can take, but I will always recommend asking your uh, doctor for the blood test. That way they'll have the information at hand and they can start working towards the correct treatment for you. So vitamin deficiencies can be seen through a blood test measuring your nutritional status. You may have to ask your doctor specifically to check for these nutrient deficiencies outside of your routine blood work. So you're gonna ask for a vitamin D test, you're gonna ask for anemic panels. So it's gonna check for your iron, your ferritin, folate, and B12. Once you take this, te once you take this test, uh, set, up a, set up a call or follow-up appointment with your doctor when he or she receives the results. From there, you could go and talk about the supplements, dosage, or anything that will help you. And I hope you found this video very informative and I would, again, I'm probably saying it for the third or fourth time today, but I will link those studies down below if you're curious to read them yourself. And if you do have any vitamin deficiencies or if you've taken the, any uh, blood tests or if you're on certain supplements, drop a comment below. Also, just drop a comment below if you didn't even know that there was a possibility of having nutrient deficiencies with PCOS. I know when I was first diagnosed, it was never brought up to me. Again, this is one of the reasons I do make videos like this is to open up conversations with your doctors and to be informative on more, to present more information on PCOS. Again, like when I was first diagnosed, I had no idea. It's kind of like, here's what you're going to do. Come back when you want to get pregnant. And then I'm, as I'm doing research, I'm like, oh, what is this? Why am I feeling this way? Anyways. But drop a comment below if you have any information or if you thought certain vitamins you're surprised by or minerals that you didn't think would be a deficiency. Um, again, let me know your thoughts down below. I would love to hear it. And if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. That way you could keep up with my future videos. And again, I do post cooking and workout videos outside of just talking about PCOS. It's a great way to show support and I really appreciate it. And with that being said, I'll leave this video off as is and I'll see you at the next one.